Hi everybody, it's Ms. McKenzie, your K-12 District Teacher Librarian. This week's virtual field trip is taking a tour of all of our fabulous, amazing library spaces, and we're kicking it off in my office where a lot of the magic happens. So I'm the district teacher librarian. I also serve as the site teacher librarian for three buildings. So I'm really doing the job of four people. Um, when I am not in the buildings teaching classes and I'm in every building just about every single day, I do a lot of behind the scenes work from my office. Okay, so that's where we're that's where we're at right now. All right, I just flipped the camera around. We're looking at my computer. I color code my calendar. I have an open, flexible point of need schedule, which means that teachers and staff members can use my Calendly link to book time on my calendar. Orange means I'm in direct instruction and working with groups of people. Blue is oftentimes administrative work. So this week I'm doing a lot of orange uh, lessons. So I'm uh, working with the elementary students this week. If I flip back to last week, it's all blue. I was doing a ton of administrative work with lessons in between. All right, so that's just kind of my flow. I'm open, flexible, point of need schedule. Um, some of the highlights of my office. I can't believe I'm doing a tour inside my office, but here we are. Um, <laughs> so we, uh, our learning community loves Breakout EDU. I probably facilitate a couple of games a week. Um, it's just a simple way to gamify your uh, curriculum. And we have about 12 kits. So I have done our entire Sayusla staff in one fell swoop, or we pop into classes when teachers need us. Um, those kits are sitting on my fabulous makerspace cart. So one of the things that we brought to the school district a couple years ago were makerspaces. Makerspaces can be low tech to high tech. Um, they just celebrate the engineering design process and they are a way for students to tinker and explore. Okay, so we kick out a new makerspace kit for all three libraries every single week. This past week it was our gray whale migration um, because that's happening up and down our coast. Um, next week is peak season. I want to point out that um, in addition to all the virtual field trips that we do, we occasionally, last year I was doing them once a month, uh, we were doing uh, virtual field trips and then I would collect specimens from all the places that we visited and we would do micro virtual field trips. So we have, the library has a microscope and a stereo microscope to do those micro virtual field trips. I was a clinical lab science major be before I became an English teacher, before I became a librarian. Um, that is our, our staff PD book for next year. It's another one from Carrie. Smith. Um, I love doing out of the ordinary book studies, okay? So Carrie Smith is very artistic. We did Wreck This Journal two years ago. Um, so we're going to do another Carrie Smith book next fall. Um, another thing I want to mention is that these are a bunch of virtual reality headsets, the Oculus Quest. Um, every library now has a virtual reality headset for open play during open library time. And I have an additional six sets to take into classrooms for curricular programming. And that's been picking up steam. Um, a lot of students or teachers are requesting VR as incentives at the moment. All right, so like I said, a lot of staff members are currently requesting VR in their classrooms to use an, as incentives, particularly at the elementary level. Um, as soon as we're able to start purchasing really awesome VR apps for our devices, we'll be tucking into classes more for curricular purposes. Um, and I'm really excited. I'm heading to the Oregon Library Association conference in a, about a month. And there are a ton of sessions about preserving indigenous history with VR. Um, San Jose State University is bringing a whole crew of VR researchers and um, folks who are really tapping into innovation with VR in the classroom and uh, for the workforce. Um, okay, so thanks for letting me share inside my little world. Um, we're going to head out to uh, see our elementary um, library with Mrs. Craig, our middle school library with Mrs. Graybill, and our high school library with Ms. Luevano. All right, let's head on out. Okay, so I used the learning community. We are with the 
fabulous. And this is Julia Craig in the elementary library. We're starting our tour here at the elementary school and then we'll pop into the middle school and high school libraries as well. Mrs. Craig, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Mrs. Craig. I've been in the district for, this is my 25th year. Yay. And I think eight years in the library now. Okay. And we just finished up with our book fair. We still have our, um, one of our um, displays up where kids were able to take pictures in the time machine. Um, we're all cleared up with that, but we had the biggest book fair that we have ever had. Um, such a success. And uh, so now we're kind of back to normal, I think. Um, in our library, we have a little space where we have some makerspace kits. And we had some third graders this morning taking advantage of that, making some uh, sea lion puppets. Yeah, our Viking leaders. We have Viking leaders come in every mm -hmm. morning and help out with morning enrichment and other tasks. And I love that um, one of the older kids came and got a kit to work with the younger kids. That's really mm -hmm. sweet. Yeah. yeah, I think they had a good time with that. Um, we also, although I don't yet have a display up for it, but we also have some fun things in the morning for the kids to do. One of them would be our um, stick together posters, and oh. we have a couple of them. Let's go look already at those. Already stuck. Yeah, those are they're such a hit. They're a hit at all of the schools, um, elementary, middle school, and high school. But it is fun watching the students. So, and these have been the rage all across the country. And it's kind of like paint by number, but it's paint by sticker. And then they just look super cool hanging up as well. All right. Do you want to show us like maybe the different sections in the library? We have our like easy reader, fiction, nonfiction. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Right in this great big area where I usually have classes at is the nonfiction area. Okay. Um, sometimes we have different teachers displaying things in here as well which are on the top of the shelves over there for the music class. Okay. Um, biographies over in this section. Okay, biographies are still a big hit. A lot of teachers still use, you know, do biographical research, that kind of stuff. And uh, quite a few of the kids really like to go to um, a bucket where I have specifics like Fly Guys. Okay, Fly Guys. What if you could, Ooh. books. I am. Hey, books. these are these are really popular. Yeah. Um, even at the middle school, I mm. know Mrs. Graybill just ordered some we of those love as those. well. Yeah, yeah. I have yeah. some more of those on order. You're really good with the buckets and finding the super popular hits mm. with the students. And um, our middle school and high school library is genreified. This library is not, but your buckets kind of serve a little bit like that. It's just um, whatever we can do to get get students to the books they like the best, mm -hmm. quickest. So yeah, yeah. So coming on over here, we have the uh, Easy Reader picture books. Okay. I usually display books out on the table here so that the littles um, can easily just kind of circle around and choose a book to pick out and I replenish that after every class. And I'm gonna look, I'm looking at the artwork and I believe this is your artwork mm -hmm. in the corner. That isn't yours, but this oh, is oh. yours. Yes. That is, and then the unicorn. That was from another book fair, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. So um, each year the book fair has a theme, and then you go all out and make these really cool um, like photo book booth options. That's yes. really fun. <laughs> okay. All uh, right. Coming on over here, we have um, where I display some new books. Um, the kids are always hovering around this area looking what's new. After my book fair, um, I'm going to be start putting out some more new books there, which I'm so excited over. I pulled some lower um, reading level books to put in baskets and on shelves over here. I know so, that I just totally cut you off. I'm so sorry, but I know that when we did a virtual field trip with the other librarians around the state, there were a lot of our elementary librarian friends that really loved how you had the things in the baskets and then your point level books over there. Um, mm -hmm. Do you wanna say more about this area? That's really helpful for kids that are transitioning um, from the easy reader picture books um, to uh, higher level, level books. Usually it's second grade, um, sometimes first grade, but then their teacher is able to see and guide them to some of these spots. 
Yeah. So they have a whole variety of things to choose from here. Yeah, this is really smart right here. And um, the books are labeled with the reading levels on the spines. Yeah, for ease of access, self-selection. All right. And one big popular area also is the graphic novels. <laughs> you can tell because it's always like... It's, it's a little, little sparse right now because... Uh -huh. um, the kids are they love them so much yes yeah they're all checked yeah. out that's that's mm -hmm. what it looks like in every library is that section is always kind of like a little bit of a tornado mm -hmm. because the kids love that section so much we're always trying to grow our graphic novel section yeah. oh and right behind you this is super cute there's another one of your book fair <laughs> um picture photo booth things my first one yeah, yeah. So i love that um against the wall are the hardback fiction and then in the on the black shelves here are the paperback fiction. Again, the kids really love the um, baskets. Gra um, it's kind of like grab and go. Yeah, grab and go. Yeah. They can mm -hmm. find, they find a series that they love and then they keep coming back to that basket. And then we also have the Obob books over here as well. We have our um, high school team made it to state. They got first place in regionals. And then we had an elementary team and a middle school team go to regionals as well. All right. Is there anything else you're wanting to highlight in your fabulous library? <laughs> okay. Um, thank you so much for giving us a tour of your amazing space. We appreciate you so much. Bye. Bye. Okay. All right. Now we're over at the middle school with the amazing Val Graybill. Do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Miss Graybill. I've been in the library for two years now and at the school for four. Um, this is our amazing Women's History Month display. Miss Wells created Wonder Woman here. We also have free book shelf over here for kids to take any books they want. Right at the door. All right, we're going to do a walk and talk and just kind of move around the library. Okay, so this library compared to the elementary is genre-fied. Do you want to say anything about the genres and how you locate them? Or? Yes. So. We have made all these awesome signs to tell kids where they're looking for the books they're looking for. Um, big, giant, beautiful signs. Very prominent, like you can see them from across uh -huh. the library, okay? So and when you scan across also, the library, you can see them. Oh. And we also have these awesome labels here so kids can find their books easier if they're looking for a specific author. Okay, let's take a lap around this way. This is our newest library of all the libraries in the district. Ooh, look at those more genre signs. Awesome. Um, what else over oh, here? Okay. Yes. Books versus movies. <laughs> so we do have this. This is a display you always keep available yes. because students love reading the book and then watching the movie. Okay. New book, new book display right here. Awesome. Okay, we're and it is lunchtime in the middle school library, so we have a lot of business in here. Do you want to say anything about the clear touch panel? Um, as you can clearly see, the kids love this thing. They put some silly faces on it. Yeah, so it's open for students to draw before school. <laughs> lunchtime whenever they have free time in the library okay I always yeah <laughs> I'm always walking in here and seeing something very creative on the panel um, do you want to say something about this corner because you just created this lovely corner where Mrs. Apple is sitting back and relaxing so this is a hangout area for the kids comfortable area we also have the game shelf over there so it has a bunch of games and stuff on it for the kids Okay. Uh, and then over there, we have the Lego table. Okay, so now tell us about this Lego wall and Lego table. This is amazing. Every library wishes they had a Lego wall and a Lego table. So our woodshop teacher, Mr. Garcia, was amazing and built this table for the kids. Um, yeah, and the kids love it. Yeah. I love that we have uh, really fabulous partnerships with other staff members in the district. That's what we're all about. I need to be. And then our very last, oh yes, we have a student wanting to be on camera. And then very last but not least, you have some of the most vibrant makerspace stations in the school district. So I'm going to just kind of zoom in here. And do you want to talk over my shoulder? 
So you're constantly figuring out what students want and creating stations for them. Yeah, so we have the bracelet maker station. Good old fashioned spirograph. That's like, I'm an 80s child. I remember the spirograph. Origami books, so they can do with paper there for them to. Take the origamis. Oh, and look at you have a little rock baking. I'm going to zoom in on that real quick. I'm going to move the seal, the sea lion. So you even have paint pens so students can paint rocks. That's awesome. Okay. Um, and I'm also, like, along the back wall, you have open game play available. For students. Over, over here we have students taking turns on the Oculus virtual reality headset. Fun. So you have a little um, setup for that. We're playing seated Oculus. That's a really good classroom management tip. For any other, yes, takes up less space. The students are a little bit more calm. Yeah, for any librarians watching, seated play is a good idea. And then let's, let's uh, we've got two more things we really want to take a, a look at over here. Tell us about your AR store. Do you want to hop over there? <laughs> oh wait, let's introduce Rylan first. Rylan, I've, I've got these amazing TAs. You do have okay. fabulous TAs. Yes, yes. Hi. Amazing. <laughs> But here is the AR store, so they take AR tests, you know, and get all the points, and then they get to spend it at the Look store. Look at all this stuff. And we were talking about opening this up to staff members, because like, hello, I'd read a book for a little clip for my hair, why not? You've got socks, beanies, all this super fun stuff. Just like really creative, you're super creative. And then we're gonna swoop around the corner here, and we're gonna end on... 3D printer. Okay, so we have student volunteers who keep the 3D printer going. Um, the middle school has had the 3D printer going the longest. Um, we do now have 3D printers in all three buildings. It's just a matter of um, keeping them running because, you know, just like with all techie things, we have hiccups and then we need someone to fix it and then keep, a, keep the prints running. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. Well, thank you. You're Have amazing. A great day. <laughs> okay, we are now over at the high school with the fabulous, amazing Miss Elizabeth Luebano. Do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi, I'm Ms. Luebano. This is my second year as the library aide at the high school. Okay, yeah. let's like cruise around and just check out some of the awesome things we have in here. Yeah. Okay, we got some new book displays. This yeah. is. So this one always has all the new books that we have in the library, and then same with these shelves back here. These okay. always have new books. So right when you walk in, brand new books? Yeah. Okay, awesome. I want to read that in waves graphic novel. Oh, I know. The art's amazing in it. Yeah. It's one of the uh, American Library Association Youth Award winners this okay. year. Okay, all right. Yeah. Good, awesome. Um, I guess we can pause right here. We didn't look at this, the... Um, the system at the middle school, we have some make and take, and then uh, we always have students sign in when yeah. they come into the library because we're tracking data and how our library is being mm -hmm. used. That helps us advocate for our budget. And then let's pop back over here. Do you want to say anything yeah. about the yeah. these computers? I have to update. It's no longer Black History Month, but yeah. um, this is where you can uh, search. So if there's a book or an author that you're interested in reading, you can always come over here and type it in and any books we have by that title or author will pop up. Yeah, okay, cool, all yeah. right. Um, let's swing around. Ooh, I see you have a little station set out, so. Yeah. station, this is usually where kids play games at this table, because it's nice and big. So I put some board games out, and chess is really popular. <laughs> chess is very popular right at the high school. And then we also have a game club, right? Yeah. A game club, and then we have a chess club too. Okay, we have the chess club as well, all right. Um, I always see students putting together puzzles in this yeah. library. So the current puzzle is uh, Influential Women for Women's History Month. Yeah, so right on. That's one of the puzzles right now. We've got this nice fuzzy mat. Yeah. It's always kind of fun. You always have really great book displays. Oh yeah, this is our, uh, this is the Women's Awareness Month. Display. Fabulous, absolutely fabulous. Yep, and we, we try to follow all the American Library Association celebrated cultural events and, and themed months. Um, so thank you for that. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, this is always a popular one at the high school as well, the blackout poetry. Yeah. 
And then I also have a tinker crate out right back here for our students to complete. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thanks to Ms. McKenzie. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to circulate those. They're kind of they're kind of a one person one shot, you know. Yeah. maker activity but they're cool we gave it gave it a try this year yeah. um you have some musicians at the high school as well yeah. we have some students who are fabulous piano players mm -hmm. all the things so yeah. that's awesome yeah and we also have ukuleles to check out and then we have a keyboard and a harp right here yeah ukes for checkout awesome um, we were just over at the middle school and we saw students drawing on the clear touch panel. So it's just fun to point out that all of our libraries have a clear touch panel, um, which is just super nice in the space for creativity and just having updated technology for teaching. Cause you have a lot of staff members who use this space for all the events, yeah. right? This is like the event center. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just easy for a teacher to come in with their laptop they just plug in using an HDMI cable and then everyone can see what yeah. they need to present. All right. Mm -hmm. um, while we were over at the middle school, we were talking about our um, middle school and high school being genreified. Yeah. Now you were the person who did primarily all the genreification in this library. Do you want to say anything about that? And just like at the middle school, we can see the genre yeah. categories from way across the room. We try to make the yeah. signage really big. But um, what would you like to say about all the genrefying or just the collection in general, maybe? Yeah, it's been much, very much updated. I think it was uh, our collection age was in the 1970s when I started. Yes, it was. It's finally brought up to 2008, so it is a much more modern collection than it was uh, even when I went to high school here. Um, the nonfiction actually used to be on this island right here. Okay. But we're going to be getting rid of this next year. We've been um, doing a lot of like facilities updates yeah. in this space and it's slow work, but we've made progress. So like, um, we've taken, we've knocked out some shelves. We've taken out some shelving. Um, we are recovering all the tables. Rafael Garcia, our woodworking uh, teacher is helping uh, teach students how to relaminate tables for us. So it's like a work yeah. in progress. All of the furniture in the library is the same furniture as when the school was opened in 1960. So yes. we have all the same tables and chairs. So it's nice to bring like a modern feel to the library. Yeah, we're trying to upcycle. Hey, as I'm like looking at the collection, do you want to say something about the data analysis that you did? You went, we oh, went yeah. to the OASL conference and mm -hmm. we attended a diversity. Um, audit. It was like yeah. how to conduct a diversity audit. And will you just tell us about the work that you and your students did and what were your results and what did you do with them? Yeah. So um, I had three TAs. Uh, shout out to Sam, Lucian, and other Sam. I had my two Sams and Lucian. Uh, for the fiction section, when I went to the um, library conference, uh, we, I attended a seminar about a diversity audit and it's pretty much screening every book based off of how diverse it is. So um, I had my TAs start on that and they worked just, they reviewed every book in our fiction section to figure out how much, how diverse it was. And it is still very white. Um, we're working on uh, making it more diverse so that way every student feels like they're seen in our collection. Yeah. Because that's really important because a lot of kids read to see themselves in the stories. Mm -hmm. So, um, so it was a lot of work. They had to pull every book yeah. off the shelf. They had to look at like who's the author, who's what the author. what types of people are represented, yeah. what themes are represented. And then they were literally filling out a Google form for every single book. Yeah. Because we know Google Forms kick out that amazing data for us. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and then it, it helps us make a case to apply for grants. Yeah. And, um, and we're all three of our district libraries. We're just continually, like you said, trying to diversify yes. our collection, especially when we... This is my third year in the district, and especially when um, we first did a collection analysis three years ago, like you said, all of our collections were dated like 1960, yeah. 1970. And really a, a school library collection should be five to 10 years 
current, I mean, no, yeah. no more than five to 10 years old because we don't archive. We don't archive like public libraries and like academic libraries. We only keep what's being circulated and what's connected to curriculum. So we really need a fresh updated collection. Yeah. You know, so we've been doing a lot of work there. Yeah. And speaking of grants, I actually used our um, diversity audit info to apply to the Snapdragon Foundation. So I'm hoping to maybe get a grant next year to uh, order some more books. Yeah, that would be amazing. Um, okay, is there anything else you're wanting to swing around and show us? Should we go yeah. take a peek at the fiction real quick? Yeah, I would like to show off the um, student reviews. Let's go look at the student review. reviews, yes. Ah, no! <laughs> And you're doing such a great job with dynamic shelving and like front facing books. Um, go ahead and tell us about your student reviews. Yeah, so I had a lot of students who were telling me their thoughts about books and I was like, this would be great um, for the students to also see what others, like what their peers think. So I bought these little um, clip on, what do you call it? Clip shelf clippy things? Shelf clippy thing. <laughs> and I had students write reviews and then I stuck it on and then I would put the book on display. So this one is actually written by a student. This is from last year, but every time I put this review out, this book gets checked out because of how well they wrote their thoughts on the book. And I had my TA, Monica, write one as well. And if you've seen the TikTok with Monica, this was one of the books that oh, yeah. she chose. And this is her review of The Shining. Perfect. Yeah, that is so true. Anytime we put something on a book, we clip something on a book, um, you clip something on and say, you know, so-and-so's favorite book, like it just gets checked out. It's yeah. just part of like increasing circulation is just highlighting those awesome books. Yeah. All right. We got another one over here in the classics. Okay. No longer human. Oh, this makes me want to read the books. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. Yeah. And then we're always trying to grow our graphic novel section. Yeah. It's like our, every student's, um, every one of our schools, usually the number one genre. Yeah. Because we do survey our students, elementary, middle school, high school, beginning of every school year, and ask what are your favorite genres, and then we purchase accordingly. Um, so yeah, thank you yeah. for all of your work. Um, thank you so much for being yeah, amazing and have a wonderful day. Bye.